Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Well, I'm gonna do something different. Something that spirit moved me to reveal to you. You know, spirit reveals stuff to, you know, people receptive, people with certain gifts, right? And you all know that I have some very rare gifts given to me by the Creator. And yes, I will admit that I'm one Virgo, and it might be the Pluto in Virgo with Uranus in Virgo, sextile Neptune in Scorpio, that I do possess some very rare psychic powers. I think I'm the only one in my whole life that came this way, close to a superhero, really. Like we did, we're like we all used to tap into and use freely in Lemuria. Nothing is new under the sun, remember that. But spirit, and I, did, I listen, I didn't know this. I did not know this. Uh, I, and I, I consider myself to be a highly ordained astrologer. The, the one that rules and advises nations. I know I'm that type of nigga. I know I'm that type of astrologer. I know that. I know it. But, spirit knows so much more than that. And above three times to the tenth power. So it's like minuscule shit. Like crumbs that fall from the table. That's what I got. And yet, down here on this 3D plane, it's considered enormous. But it's really not, eh, that's what the creator says. Eh, I can make it more powerful. I don't think I could, I could stand it. I don't, I don't think I could stand it. And the, the polarity of what I have to go through to, to continue to get these downloads and these gifts. Well, you see me, I'm living in a fucking, uh, not a cardboard box, I think I'm a little bit more prestigious than that. But I'm back into the army days, I'm sleeping and living off my, my camp sack. I mean, that's the polarity for getting something great. You always gotta pay somewhere. So the higher the gifts, the higher the cost. Why is this important for you to know with the Capricorn full moon? Well, they are telling me, my archons, and they told me because they were told to tell me that in the, out of the six parents, Aries, Libra, Taurus, Scorpio, Gemini, Sagittarius, Cancer, uh, Capricorn, Leo, Aquarius, Virgo, Pisces. Those are the parents of the full and new moon. But here's the thing. You know, the full moon and the new moon are used differently by different astrologers. Now, for example, I prefer the full moon to do, you know, when I was younger and when I was a witch. Now I'm a high priest, you know. But when I was a low level witch, I used to love using the full moon and lunar phases for spells and magic. Never did anything negative. Mostly what I did is broke spells, like, like the Ghostbuster. And d healed people from ailments that were uh, attacked by agency of lunar magic. And I am very averse with, averse with lunar magic. I can sense this, my life. the gods and goddesses of the moon tell me, and I break them up, you know, the moon walks with me, so no one can ever succeed at moon magic, I am the child of the moon, so how could you turn my own mother against me, that's how you have to look at it, which is why I'm immune to all these spells, but you collector have been given a great gift too, it starts today. Now you guess what I did though. Because I, I, I acted like a hustler. You know, you know, the hustler nigga. Gutter, gutter trash. From the gutter alley. Taking a hit. <laughs> so I can, I, can, I can provide you with the, with the imagery. I said well. 
when they told me this, I I was elated because I didn't know it either. That you're learning it as I learned it uh, last night when I slept on the floor. And I tell you, it, I, I was I always had a hunch that the full moon and the new moon was never complete. Something was let out. Something was left out. And I don't think that that should be astrologers that pitch the new moon and others that pitch the full moon. I think we all should be uniform in making a decision of what begins and what ends. For many astrologers, the new moon is what ends and the full moon begins. Well, as a witch and then later as a sorcerer and then as a hierophant and then as a high priest. I'm 55 years old now. I have experience. I tell you, it's the other way around. Whatever needs and wants you have, you, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, you petition for that which you want. And you got to spend time doing this, like maybe an hour of that full moon. Or a day before the full moon, which is the gibbous moon. You put your desires and intent, however you want to do it. Whether it's through angel work, ancestral work, or Risha work, or any other divinatory philosophy that, that even atheism, Satanism, they're all systems of beliefs and philosophy, they fit in the picture too. So when you make your intent, you're planting the seed. That's the full moon of any sign. If you want to reap the results, you must, at the closing of whatever system of spell or prayer, whatever you do, you must affirm that, you must affirm, thank you very much, my mother or father, guy, or, you know, whatever system you want to use, just put, just put it in there for granting you this wish. The wish though has to be comparable to the sign that the moon is in. Both new moon and full moon. There's another component that goes with having that knowledge and knowing what you want and then saying thank you because you've already got it and manifest two weeks later. For that to occur smoothly, you need the third ingredient. And that third ingredient is the songs. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not that simple. Like the songs that you can read, uh, you know, to cast spells and demons, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. This use of the songs is quite different quite different here you will be given by me the actual song that you need to exact what you want that sound is like a seal or a sigil that exists only in the 5D. That's why you won't see a picture or, um, uh, or an illustration of it on the 3D. And anyone who tells you that they have that kind of imagery on paper is a liar. They will not allow this to materialize in crystallized form like we are. It will stay in the 5D. And I will give it to you. Then I'll forget. And you must use it. And if you do, you're going to be running. You're going to get on a plane and run to Uncle Fernando. It worked. It worked. Now, I myself am learning this with you at the same time. Because I've never used the Psalms this way. And there's never been anything written on record. Even in the occult philosophy schools, mystery schools, this type of information about the Psalms. So like the New School of Alexandria, or the old library of, of Alexandria, where they had these secrets, they had these truths and these occult doctors and documents. That's why they burned the library to the ground. And who was behind it? The church. Just giving you a little, little history. 
why this world has gone backwards more than a day after the first classical period. There's a reason for that. We were going the classical period, we were exalting, then boom, we fucking almost plunged to the fucking dark ages, middle age. Like the Tower of Bab, every time we make a, a forward movement, advancement, the, the Jehovah comes and goes BAP and makes us speak other languages and then we can never progress again slow. This is Saturn, Jehovah. The keeper of time, the ruler of time. So he can delay man's progress or he can speed it up. And he does it by using the agency of the moon and its phases. The two principal ones used by Saturn as the dial and the clock is the new moon and the full moon. Now, you, you give your donation, I'll tell you what it is for that particular sign, for that particular need, addressed by the sign that the moon finds itself in. That way it's not taking that a joke. Oh, you want you want this and achieve it? Read this song. And you're going to pay this pledge. And you will get what you want. But you better be sure. You better be sure. That this is what you want. Because it will materialize. I promise you. Let me give you an example. Let's say we're in a Capricorn for a new a full moon. So, in the transcourse of going through the signs, I'm going to give you examples of what to do. Let's start with um, Aries. Aries. In the mundane chart, you have Capricorn in the 10th house. So, this is concerning your career. Because your full moon in Capricorn is in the 10th house, this, this is already a manifested event which you had had prior concerns about that now you're getting an answer to. Now it's materializing for you. And this may have to do about making a choice of either changing careers and leave the boss man behind and you become the boss. There is a major, oh, that, that's major. Or it could be as minor as, should I put a gray suit for this executive's meeting, or should I put on the blue one? It can be that simple. Or it could be monumentous career and even life changing. It really doesn't make any, it, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you know how to fool, that you know that this is what you want, you know, give it a lot of thought, take 90 days, 3 months, think it over, make sure that this is what you want. Then you go into whatever praying system or belief system you use to cement a solid proof that will manifest itself on the new moon. And with that song, with that particular number, addressing that particular issue, which reflects the sign that the moon is in will give you what you want now the moon is in capricorn so this has to and it's in the 10th house so it has to do with career or something in the career is being illuminated with the full moon and you may not see it right away because it's illuminating like the sun and blinding you but then it gets clearer as it begins to wane and enter the new moon then you have full clarity of a situation whether it's a person, situation, what have, what have you. You understand? So this is how you use the full and new moon. In Aries, many of you are going to be illuminated by a career choice that you've made, a contract choice that you've made that no longer bears its usefulness, and now you must move on. Or some of you might have been fired because it has been illuminated that the job was a copycat job and it wasn't real, and you were plagiarizing someone else's work like my twin brother doing to me and i'm aries so so you know this talk directly to me and to many 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 of you as well taurus to have taurus in the mundane child and descendant puts capricorn in the ninth house of belief and belief system you are acting like the tail of the scorpion because you are the holder of tradition 
and values that have stood the, the test of time that has become the definition of a tradition of a culture now comes under threat with Capricorn the devil being here either you are going to protect the old system or are you going to defend it by destroying the new system emerging with ferocity and terror as only Taurus knows how to be so this and the polarity is Scorpio so with Taurus being on this and then you are, are talking about Taurus because we're dealing with the mundane chart which is the collective reading <coughs> there we go got a little bucket there no McDonald's I mean Burger King so understand that with uh, Capricorn in the ninth house there is a devil system of belief that really irks you Taurus and you want to see it destroyed or you may be the one that is holding diabolical which can be seen that way of old norms and truth that no longer fit the time or the age they can be seen as demonic as well because it's catering to something that no longer has uh, that we've acted as humans have absor absorbed and absorbed into the collective so it becomes stagnant energy uh, ignorant energy some of you torches have to be careful because if you are on the side of the ignorant and the brute, this will be illuminated in your Capricorn ninth house. And then you'll fall out of grace and people will see that you are a far worse stubborn mule in a cage than one grazing in the pastures. You choose Tom. Which one will you be? And then of course, we have Gemini. And Gemini, to have my Gemini on the ascendant puts Oh, sorry. Put um, Capricorn in the eighth house. So, mm, yeah, yeah. Because Gemini, uh, Sagittarius. If you have Gemini, you have Sagittarius. Then you have uh, Capricorn. Yeah. Capricorn is in the mundane eighth house of Gemini. And. With uh, Capricorn being here in the house of Scorpio, there could be a secret about some employer or employee. Uh, and when I say employer, it could be an institution. When I say, well, or it could be also your boss, the employer that, that gave you the job. But it can also be an employee, but not just any employee. It will have to be one as powerful as the actual boss of the company. This is the house of betrayal and big money, business, transactional agreements, uh, uh, hush money, fuck you money, or many different types of money. Uh, and there's political entanglement surrounding whatever is going on with the mysteries of Scorpio. And that can encompass anything and everything at the same time. So it determines you know your birth chart and, and uh, what energies you have by birth in that house and see how the transits especially the full and new moon affect these points in your chart they might also be personal midpoints too you know especially if you feel it very strongly Gemini so it is a time where there may be a lot of arguments in your job and there will be secrets that may have even go back to the past that now becomes revelatory to you, Gemini. So this is how you do to look at. And whatever you need, if you have the full moon in Capricorn in the eighth house, it may be more money. Get a bigger raise. Or get a more riskier job that has higher demand responsibilities. Because we have to remember that we're still dealing with the Capricorn full moon. So it will be career work related as a general theme. Okay, and it looks like 